It can be really easy to get overwhelmed with your audio inputs and outputs on Windows. This usually happens with gamers or folks that have not just started with their laptop and their main speaker, but then plugged in headphones, plugged in other headphones, paired their Bluetooth. Maybe you plugged in a monitor over HDMI and your monitor showed up with its speakers. So here is a video to explain some of those things for you. This is in response to my son becoming frustrated with his audio outputs, and he didn't realize how many devices that he had. So let's go ahead and switch to picture in picture and let's take a look at a few things. If we zoom in down here in the corner, you've got your volume control. When you click on that with a left click, a single left click, you're used to just adjusting your volume and moving around like that. That's pretty typical. However, if you click over here on the right side, you see this sound output that pops up and you can see that there's a a hotkey as well. Now it depends on the version of Windows that you have. So this is a newer version of Windows 11. You might have an older version, but generally the stuff that I'm showing you applies. I want to point out that I've got lots of different devices here, and that can be super confusing. We're going to note a couple of things. The device appears to the right of the name of those um, those audio outputs. So the real tech USB audio is the built-in sound card, the built-in sound system on my device here. This Oculus virtual audio device, it's not a real device, it's a software headphones. That's for talking to my uh, MetaQuest 3. ProFX, that's another device that I've got that's a physical mixer. Headset, that's this thing here that I use for team calls. NVIDIA Broadcast, that was installed when I installed my NVIDIA uh, video card, and that's another virtual sound card. That can be really confusing, so how do you find the right one. Well, you either know and you guess, or if you move the volume control and you click left and right, you may be able to hear that beeping. So typically what I do is I'll switch it, switch to a certain headphone, go back, and I'll click back and forth, and I'll click back and forth, and that allows me to figure out what's going on. So when my son earlier said, I can't hear from my computer, I was able to click on the one that I thought was correct, and hop back and forth to make it beep. Another obvious thing to do, of course, is to open up a YouTube, some music, just have it playing, and then when you switch, you can figure out where the audio output is coming from. Okay. Now, I want to point out also, though, that I, even though I have a lot of different devices here, in fact, some of them are missing. I've actually hidden them or disabled them. This is a bit of an advanced technique, but if you find there's a particular device that you really don't want getting used, and when it gets used, it's super annoying, you can go and delete it. So what I've done is I've deleted or disabled uh, some of the audio outputs on my system, specifically these monitors. I have one, two, three monitors. They each are connected over HDMI, and each of those, moder th those monitors have speakers. I don't want any of those speakers to be used, so I've gotten tired of seeing Dell Display 1, Dell Display 2, and Dell Display 3, so I've removed them. Let's talk about a couple ways to do that. If I click down here, I'm going to right-click and say Sound Settings. Now, this is the modern sound settings on Windows, so this is a little bit newer. And we can see here headphones, Pro Effects, and stuff like that. I'll show you the older one as well, so there's two ways to look at this. I'm going to click on this one marked Main Speakers. Yours will be different. Yours will be different. I want to point out that you can name these. This is super, super helpful. You can name them and you can change the icon, right? So these could be my main, you know, 5.1, my main 5.1 speakers if I wanted them to be. They can be whatever I want to call them, okay? That can be whatever you want. So name... So it's your... Oops. I've got the magnifier and the... There we go. So those can be named whatever you want, and that's super helpful as well. Uh, I wanted, I had two headphones for a while. I named one of them uh, descriptively, so you can do that, okay? The second thing is that Windows 11 has these new sound mixer things, this new settings area, but there's also the old classic uh, sound stuff that's been around in Windows for, you know, 15 years. That is hard to find sometimes. You can scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you click on more sound settings. And if you click on that, you're going to go from dark mode into this old style uh, dialog. This is the one a lot of people are used to seeing. That's where I disabled my three Dell monitors. Okay. You can do that as well over here, but you have to go digging a little bit and it can be confusing. So what I did is how do I get here? I can come down and say more sound settings, but here's a trick. What you do is you run multimedia system dot 
control panel. That's mmsys.cpl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Windows R. It's going to bring up the run dialog, and then I'm going to put in the run dialog multimedia system control panel, mmsys.cpl. And when I hit OK, it's going to pop up this older dialog box here, this older dialog box. If I double click on any one of these, I can change the icon. I can also do the rename here, or I can do this trick, which is don't use this device. Now be aware, if you say don't use this device, you don't get to complain later when you can't find it and turn it back on. So be aware that you may have turned these devices off because they will disappear. Okay, now I noticed that NVIDIA Broadcast, which is my video card, which has some AI uh, filters and stuff, is set as my default device for communications, for Zoom calls, Teams calls, and things like that. And I don't want that. So I'm going to right click and I can pick, is it my default audio device or is it just my default device for communications? So I'm going to change that to my headset so I can control my defaults. Then I'll look down for the other ones, and I notice that my main 5.1 speakers are my default device. So my audio for my computer comes through my main speakers, and then the default communications device is that headphones. Notice all these disabled devices. I got those disabled because I got tired of looking at them. You can do the same if you get overwhelmed. Get it down just to the devices that you want. Everything that I just talked about also applies the exact same way to inputs. These are inputs. You can see me actually talking right now. Here's the line in on my mixer. That's my default device. If I don't want the NVIDIA broadcast to be the default device, I can have this one be both. So now it's both of those. And then I've disabled. A lot of times on large gaming PCs like the one I have here, there's multiple ways to plug stuff in. There's multiple devices. I want my audio coming out of this. So I've actually disabled the the microphone plug-in on this machine because I don't want to accidentally select one of those, be recording something, and then find out that it didn't get used. I've also, uh, and this is a good trip tip for folks that are doing Teams calls or Zoom calls, I've disabled the microphone on my um, on my webcams. So you see my Logitech Brio is disabled, and I don't have to think about those anymore. Last thing I want to share with you is uh, a little tip. If you click down here in the corner, again, you've got this Windows Volume Mixer. Now, newer versions of Windows have this Volume Mixer that lets you select on a per application basis what's going to be loud and what's not going to be loud. So, for example, you could have Spotify running at one volume and you could have your game running at another volume. But there's a really great tool that I want to point you to if you go over to the Windows Store. It's called Ear Trumpet. Okay, This is not a Microsoft thing. This is a third party uh, from uh, Rafael Rivera and a number of other folks. This is a volume control app for Windows. Uh, you can, I think it's on uh, GitHub as well. And what's great about Ear Trumpet, I'm going to go ahead and just hit install right now, is it's a uh, volume control manager on steroids for Windows. So it's basically a replacement for how you think about doing stuff with your volume. So I'm going to hit that. And it's going to warn me. And it has this little animation that it wants you to hide one volume control and add theirs. And this is really clever because what they're doing is they're making their own volume control icon. So let's take with this. That's the ear trumpet third party volume control. And that's the Windows one. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click down here. You're going to want to grab your trunk and you're going to want to drag it down here and pin it. So that's the one you're going to start using. Okay, so when you click on it, look at that. Look at that. That's so good. I'm going to actually move myself out of the way. That's so good. Let's go over here. So I click on ear trumpet. Now I've got the ability to see I can change my volumes. I can change my input on a per per app basis. Super clean, super clean. Look at that. That is complete control. Device volume, app volume. Lovely. Now, again, you wonder why that isn't like that out of defaults. Why, <clears throat> why Windows doesn't do that? Probably would overwhelm everyone. But what's great about Ear Trumpet is that they give you all these selections. They respect the ones that I've hidden, and they let you get back to the Windows legacy support as well. So there's a video 
uh, looks like about 10 minutes long, about everything you need to know about your inputs and your outputs and your Windows sound devices. I hope this helps someone out. Uh, and now I've made a video for my son that I can point him to. So when he gets his inputs and outputs confused with his games, he'll be able to uh, solve that problem. Thanks so much. Like and subscribe. Smash that bell, kids. Bye.